you know, victories like that um, really go down in history because, you know, at that point, I mean, we all know what we'd gone through the week beforehand and, you know, we had sat in the conference room trying to decide, okay, what are we going to do? Are we, are we going to sit out the next race or two? Or There was a real conversation um, about that. Real conversation about it. And, and I remember in the in the boardroom, you know, Dale always sat at the end of the – uh, at the end of the, this big, long, beautiful table. And as we're all sitting there, you know, in tears and trying to figure out what, what you know, what the hell we're going to do, what's the right thing to do to honor Dale. And, um, and I remember, to this day, I remember when Neil Bonnet died and, and your dad saying that he's going to go out in the next race and kick, kick everybody's bleep and in honor of uh, Neil Bonnet. And... You know, so, I mean, that, that made the answer kind of easy to decide on what we were going to do. Or like, you know, if Dale was sitting in his spot at the end of the table, he'd say, you go out there and you win that damn race and you win it for me, mm. just like he did for Neil. So, uh, yeah. and so anyway, we, st- we started that weekend and, uh, you know, we had to walk into the track with our heads kind of held high and, you know, we, ha- we had a job to do and stuff that we had to do and then... Um, I remember early on in the race, uh, Junior crashed in turn four. Like first you know? or second lap, right? Um, yeah. yeah, it was, it was it pretty was early, early yeah. and, he, and, he, and he went in pretty hard. He went in pretty straight, and, you know, it was a flashback from the week before, and I think all of us just wanted to know that he was okay. And uh, when we found out he was okay, I mean, we just uh, – um, uh, another memory in my mind was, that, you know, Jeff Gordon was pretty dominant that day. And we had chased him down, and <clears throat> the guy who taught me how to race Rockingham was was Dale Senior, and he, my first year running Rockingham, I'd go out behind him, and he'd say, "You follow me. I'm going to show you how to get around here." And I'd follow him, and we'd get up to speed. We'd go down the back stretch. We'd get three quarters of the way down the back stretch. I'm a car link behind him. All of a sudden, he gets up off the gas, and I almost ran smack into the back of him. <laughs> and next thing you know, boom, there he goes, and now he's two car lengths ahead of me. So I'm catching him. I run right up on him again into in, into turn one and almost run into the back of him because he lifted so early, and all of a sudden, boom, he's three cars ahead of me. And that's when I learned. I said, man, you know, you got to lift early. You got to let the car roll through the corner. You know, don't, don't wear the tires out because everybody else be wearing their stuff out. And... And we and, and after that experience, I learned how to drive the track different. He said, "You'll see the back bumper of somebody go away, go go off into the sunset." He said, "Give it twenty laps, you'll be seeing them coming back the other way again." <laughs> and sure enough, that's what they did. And um, the memory I was going to say was coming off a of turn two, I'd pass Jeff Gordon for the lead, and Jeff Gordon being a a guy, you know, when I used to run up in New England, he was the kid that came in and competed against Dale Earnhardt. And uh, when I passed him and there was no other cars in front of me, I was like, I just passed Jeff Gordon for the damn lead here at Rockingham. I was so, I was so damn proud of myself. And then, uh, and then all of a sudden I was like, uh-oh, here comes Bobby Levani. You know, and we were on old tires and we barely had enough gas to make it. And, you know, everything just worked out to go on and win a race. And, uh you know that that last lap, I had to do everything I could to to fight off uh, Bobby Labonte. I don't know if I said Terry, but Bobby Labonte, um, in true Dale Earnhardt fashion. I mean, you know he, had, you know he had taught me how to run the fast lane and 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 to run up by the wall. And, and, and as I saw Bobby starting to catch me a little bit, my spotter was giving me intervals, and I was trying to calculate in my mind, you know, how many laps are going to be left. And by the time he gets there, and uh, you know, we we're just fortunate enough to have enough fuel to win a race. I would assume you would have left the track already. Do you? I can't even remember what really? I was doing, but yeah. um, I will say this: um, if 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 Steve doesn't win that race, uh, I don't know that I don't know how DEI would have uh, done going forward. Mm. Uh, I don't know that we can quantify how much that one win, that one single win. If you look at all the companies in the sport and the history of NASCAR and you think about, well, with this company, what's the biggest win for that company? What's the one win that that mattered the most? I think you would have to put that one near, if not at the top of the list for DEI, because had that not happened, I don't think that we would have had any of the success that we had going forward. Because 
we were, as Steve said, I mean, we were really unsure on how to proceed. Yeah. And if we go to that race, I crash on the first lap. I don't know where Michael ran. Uh, and if Steve doesn't win, what's the morale? What's that, that, that all carries over. And so for him to go out there and win that race gave everybody a bit of some relief. And, and the, the thing about it, when you lose somebody like that, the world keeps going. Rockingham was coming Sunday, whether we were going to be there or not. Hmm. And so we had to make that decision to go. He goes up there and wins, wins the race. <laughs> and it just kind of kept pushing that boat along, you know, kept pushing the barge down the stream. And, and we, we really, really needed that. And so that's what I remember from that day. I remember us wearing the three hats sitting on, I remember, you know, I had a bad day, but I, the one thing that I enjoyed the most is that me and you and Michael sat on the wall right before the start of the race on pit road. And the, we're not b- blood brothers, mm-hmm. but in that moment, I felt I felt like we were off as family as family could be, yeah. and we were there and we were together and we were gonna we didn't we had nothing but each other. Yeah. And y'all were laughing. There's a picture I remember seeing it, and it's you guys are smiling and laughing. It looks like Michael's sort of cutting up. I don't know what y'all were talking about. Probably something but, Michael said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it looked like that you guys were healing in that very moment. Yeah. And that picture really encapsulates that. Yeah. Well, I think like Junior said said it the best. I mean, you know, when when you when you're in that situation, you got to realize, you know, we're we're DEI, we're a high profile team. At that point, we weren't letting any outsiders in. So all we had was really ourselves um, to, to grieve, to mourn, uh, to, to think of how we were going to make ourselves and our team and our, and our people better. We had a lot of employees. And the, and the, and the greatest thing I ever heard was that um, somebody said this is the beginning of the healing, not only for the race team, but for the race fans. You know, we, we might have had 100 employees, um, but there's 100,000 race fans. And that one moment was the beginning of the healing of DEI because at first when we, you know, we sat at that table, uh, the high level, you know, people and brass and drivers, and we just didn't know what we were going to do. We didn't know how to react. We didn't know what you know, what we need to do. So uh, winning that race was definitely the beginning of the healing uh, where we learned as a team that we can still move forward and we can still uh, continue to grow and win races, uh, even in the absence of our of our leader. Well, th- there were three significant moments coming from a race fan's perspective at that time. There were three moments, and you guys at this table deliver two of them. That one, and then when Dale goes back to Daytona and wins mm-hmm. in that summer race, Kevin Harvick in Atlanta was the other one of, of a yeah. healing moment where that team was able to, you know, get their get their moment. And you think back and how the cards fell during that 2001 season. It's story. I, they're, they're the best movie screenwriters that ever existed couldn't have written that script for 2001 and how you guys were able to deliver healing moments that year. Yeah, just motivation too. I mean, uh, you know, I, I think the the not the you know no quit attitude that I think we all had, including Richard Childress's team. You know, with Kevin Harvick. I mean, uh, you know, we had, we had no options t- to fail. You know, I mean, we had to work as hard as we could to try to succeed because we had we had we we had seen the the deepest darkest valley that we had to climb ourselves out of, and. Uh, you know, the, the personality of all of us at DEI at that time um, was that, you know, you know, we're in the deepest, darkest valley, but we're, we're going to get back to the top of the mountain again. That's right, man.